welcomed the report which made headlines last week. Speaker of the Bayelsa State House of Assembly, Tonye Isena, was impeached on Monday after the State House of Assembly was invaded by hoodlums who shot sporadically all across the premises. The violence followed an alleged attempt by a faction of the House to impeach Isena, who had been expected to resign following pressure mounted on him by some People's Democratic Party leaders ahead of the November 16 governorship election in the state. Meanwhile, some members of the State House of Assembly elected Mondo Obolo as the new speaker. Obolo is representing Southern Ijo constituency too in the State Assembly. The 59th Independence Day anniversary of Nigeria was held low-keyed on Tuesday at the presidential villa in Abuja amidst tight security. The celebration was attended by personalities from the diplomatic community, top paramilitary officials, as well as some members of the cabinet of the federal government. The independence anniversary also witnessed the presidential change of guard from 177 guard battalion to 7th battalion of the guards brigade at the forecourt of the state house. The ceremony, which lasted for about 1 hour 45 minutes, started around 10 a.m. President Muhammadu Buhari arrived around 9.59 a.m. and immediately inspected the quarter guard before walking to the Villa forecourt to receive national salute, which was followed by a rendition of Nigeria's national anthem. Vice President Yemiya Shibaju was earlier ushered in to the venue around 9.50 a.m., while the Senate President Ahmed Lawan was ushered in to the venue by 9.46 a.m., the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bujabiamila, got to the forecourt of the presidential villa by 9.44 a.m. At the ceremony where the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Tanko Muhammad, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, and Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, amongst others. Shortly after the no-speech-making ceremony, President Buhari signed the anniversary register and released pigeons from the cage symbolizing peace and sovereignty of the country. The ceremony was a departure from the full military parade, drills and entertainment which used to hold at the Eagle Square, Abuja. The federal government on Wednesday said it has concluded plans to reintroduce toll plazas on roads in the country. This was disclosed by the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola. A brief State House correspondent alongside Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, at the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting, chaired by President Muhammadu Buhari at the presidential villa Abuja. Stressing that there was no law against toll plazas in the country, he said that the federal government is working on modalities to reintroduce cashless toll plazas. All the logistics being worked out before the reintroduction, he said, included acquiring more land that would provide up to 10 lane plazas. He also disclosed that the FEC meeting on Wednesday approved additional 15.976 billion naira for two roads in the country. The two roads are Suleja Mina, Lambata Road, and Ibadan Lagere, Ilesha Bypass. He said the two road contract approved on Wednesday were upward review from initially approved rate. On the 101 kilometer Suleja Mina, Lambata Road, he said FEC on Wednesday approved additional. 12.6 billion naira, 3.165 billion naira, he said, was the additional sum approved for the Ibadan, Lagere, Elisha Bypass. <laughs> President Muhammad Buhari and his South African counterpart, Cyril Ramaphosa, on Thursday vowed to put in place all measures needed to prevent a reoccurrence of xenophobic attacks on Nigerians and other foreigners in the country. This was contained in a joint communique issued by both leaders at the end of their meeting on Thursday in Pretoria, South Africa. At the meeting, President Ramaphosa briefed President Buhari on the recent incidents of violence affecting foreign nationals living in his country. He also acknowledged that the attacks on foreigners were not consistent with the values and principles underpinning the country's constitutional democracy. The South African leader, however, Despite the notion that incidents of violence affecting foreign nationals 
We are targeted at Nigerian nationals, saying other foreign nationals and South Africans were also affected. He assured President Buhari that the South African government was fully in control of the situation and several interventions, including engagement with the diplomatic community and others, were on the way. On his part, President Buhari, who condemned the attacks on Nigerians, expressed profound gratitude for the warm reception and hospitality accorded to him and his delegation. He also invited his South African counterpart to pay a reciprocal visit to Nigeria on a date to be jointly agreed and communicated through diplomatic channels. On Friday, a federal high court in Abuja granted bail to the convener of revolution now protest, Omoyele Showare, and his co-defendant, Olawale Bakari. The trial judge, Justice Ijeoma Ojuku, gave the order on Friday while ruling on the bail application filed by the two defendants. Showare and Bakari were arraigned by the federal government on Monday before the judge on seven counts bordering on alleged conspiracy to commit treason and money laundering, among other charges. At the resumed sitting on Friday, counsel to the duo Femi Falano, SAN, urged the court to grant bail to his client, but the prosecutor, Hazan Liman, objected to the request. Upon listening to the submissions of the two lawyers, the trial judge noted that the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, ACJA, was clear as to when someone charged with treason can be granted bail. She therefore granted bail to the two defendants in a total sum of 150 million naira. She granted bail to Showare, the first defendant, in the sum of 100 million naira and two sureties in like sum. The judge said the sureties must swear to an affidavit means of over 50 million naira and show evidence of tax payment. She added that the first defendant must deposit his travel document with the court and prohibited him from holding any public rally and must stay within the jurisdiction of Abuja. Similarly, Justice Ojuku granted bail to Bakari, the second defendant, in a sum of 50 million naira and a surety in like sum. She also held that he must deposit his travel document with the court and stay within Abuja. The second defendant was also ordered not to hold any rally and must not disobey any part of the bail conditions like that of the first defendant.